Hello, today is Wednesday, it is 4.30. It is time for our second installment of the Premier Plus Two Embroidery Software. Uh, we're gonna talk about a couple things first, and that's um, what we've got going on here at Luke's and some new products. So first of all, what we have going on. If you remember when we introduced the class, it was three weeks long, but next week, we're not having the class. The final one will be the 26th of May, not the 19th. Why? Because I'm going out of town, ha ha. I'll report back how that was. I'm going to Amish countries. For those of you that quilt, I'll report back. Now, what do we have going on next week for you since we won't have this class? And that is this cute flag wristlet that Kathleen will be teaching. And this will be on Thursday next week, which is the 20th. Okay, so she'll be doing this. And I've got the details. So the class is at 4.30 p.m. It is $15. It includes the kit. Kathleen is cutting out the kits right now. They will be available tomorrow. So if you're signed up for class, come in, pick up your kit. If you want to sign up for the class, do give us a call later. Sign up for the class. Your kit will be available. It's really, really cute. Of course, it's it's got a zipper in it, which is a lot of fun. This is a sewing class, and it's lined, okay? And I think she's going to have some options for a couple of sizes, too. So... Um, and that will be a virtual class. It'll be on Zoom. So that's going on. Uh, something else I want to tell you about that I'm excited about, for those of you that have Epic embroidery machines, Epic 1, Epic 2, I don't care. Look what's back. Pre-wound bobbins. I love these. These are not the ones that were from Viking that our technical staff said there were issues with. These are ones that are for Epics. They're only for Epics, Okay. They are $19.95 with a C, which means if you're part of club, and most of you are, if you have an Epic, they're about $15, bucks, and that includes $10. We know the Epic bobbins hold 30% more thread. They are industrially wound tight, which means there is a ton of thread. I use these exclusively on my Epic. I never wind a bobbin. Life is too short to wind bobbins. We've got the white ones right here. I'm hoping that they sell well, that people will support them. They like them. I think you'll like the results. When we start moving a lot of them, then I'm going to tell Jen that we need the black thread pre-wound bobbins because I like to have those in my arsenal. So these are new. Come in. I know they work. I use them. Okay, another new product. This is something that Kathleen brought to our attention, and it is a hot ruler. So what this does is it stands up to the heat of your iron. So if you are hemming something or folding fabric over maybe for a binding or for um, for something on a quilt where you need to, to have a seam allowance, you can fold it over the edge of this ruler and then hit it with your iron. I'm holding it so you can see the picture. So it is heat proof and does a great job. So new product, new notion. We love new notions, lady. And this is um, $18.95 if you're club and most of you are. If it's not club, it's $24.95. I've got one in my pocket to buy later tonight. So all right, so that is our news, and I think we are ready to get started with classes. I'm going to check with Alexis first to see if we have any initial questions that I need to cover, and also, I need you to check in to let us know that you're here. Alexis is my scribe. She's going to be writing down, do you have paper and pen to write down the people that are checking in? Yep, we've got Nancy Sullivan, Here you go. Johnson, I'm Cindy handing her my, Warren, my special tablet. Cindy Hausman. Good. Who else is up there? Okay, good. Yeah, because I can see the screen up here. I hate to look away from the camera. I'm sorry. I'm looking up at the big screen to see who's here. Good. So Alexis is going to write down everyone that's here, and at the end of class, we'll be drawing a name. And what will the prize be? One of our new hot rulers. So say hello. Make sure you say hello so that your name pops up on the screen and Alexis gets your your, uh, your name on the, on the list. Okay? So that's good. All right. Um, homework. I need everybody to pop in. Did you do your homework? Well, I'm looking up at the screen. Um, let's see, ladies, we've got lots of people. Um, all right, hopefully. Lisa Eifert's here, Janet Good. Grundy, Rita Wilson, Lorraine Ashby, Pam Glide. Okay, Cindy Houseman has a good question. VP3 is a stitch out file format. When you export, you export to VP3, VP4 is the file format when you're building the components of your design. That is correct. That was a good question. I have a Sapphire 85. What machine do I pick in the software? Um, you, okay, so whoever asked ask that. 
So if I'm picking that for the hoops and the Sapphire 85 doesn't appear yet, pick the Brilliance, okay? Because that will show you the, all the hoops that are available for your Sapphire um, embroidery machine. That was a good question. Um, let, yes to homework. All right, Pam. Pam. I guess that's Gynes. Gynes? Gynes. Good. Pam, she did her homework. Good. Okay, yes to homework. Excellent. All right, good. Uh, Mary Williams did her homework. Good. Okay, that's important just because all it does is reinforce the things that we've learned. Okay, so um, I'm going to get started. And the first thing I'm going to do is this. Are we ready, Alex? Are we cool? Everything's good? Oh, she's sharing the screen. So instead of seeing me, you can see the screen. Was I on the, online that whole time? Wow, good deal. All right. So we can see, and I need my mouse. You can see my screen. And um, first thing I want to do is I want to talk about designs. Now, we know how to load a design. I showed you where all the wonderful sample designs were stored within the software. That's great. But we have other places to get designs. And you may have done this before, but I want to show you if we have a design that we want to buy from the internet, how that works with our software and where we want to store it, okay? So I have loaded one of my favorite sites, which is Oh My Crafty Supplies. If you have not found this site yet, it's a, it's a doozy, I love it. Um, so it's ohmycrafty.com. Of course, when you go to subscribe, they're going to ask for your email address. Go ahead and give it to them. Now, what that does is about five times a week, they will send you an email that says today's freebie design. A lot of their designs are darling, so I feel like I'm getting a little present. Every morning when I open it up and says, what's our freebie design? I look at the design and say, ooh, I really like that. So then I click on it, it takes me to their site. I can buy it, which is a free one, right? So I check out without payment, and then I'm able to download it. Okay, so I've done this many times. And so we see that Brenda, I'm signed into this site, and I am going to go to my account. Seriously? I'm gonna go back. Hold on just a second. Okay, so I am here, I'm going to click on my account, and then I'm going to see my library of designs. So when I get here, you're going to find my downloadable content, because they know what you've purchased, and they are holding those on the site for you to be able to access. So I'm looking here, and I can see this design, and I say, oh, wow, I really like the cupcake. So I've purchased this design. And I want to be able to download it. So I click on it here. And it says I must be logged in. I thought I was logged in earlier. Great. Hopefully I typed that right. Okay, good deal. Okay, so... I see my design. And you saw when I clicked on it, it was a zip file, okay? And then you saw right down here in the bottom, it downloaded that file for me. So I logged into my Oh My Crafty account, and this works very similarly with a lot of the different embroidery design websites. I just chose this one. So I logged in, I clicked on my design, it downloaded, and it's right here, and it says open file. So I'm opening the file. And since I downloaded it, okay, it appears right here in my downloads. Now, when I hit open file, it immediately went to where the file was stored on the computer, okay? So it's right here. So I'm going to click on the cupcake design. Oh my gosh, look at all this, how confusing. Nope, not really. I see all different formats. The best way to do this is to go up here and sort them by type. So now, when I'm sorting these by type, I can see, okay, I've got, I've got Husqvarna Viking, I've got Janome, okay, I've got all the different file types. So I'm going to choose the Husqvarna Viking, 
right here. I see that that particular design came in three sizes. I like that. So what I'm going to do is I need to find a place for these designs to be stored. And this is what I recommend. We're going over here. This is going to look very familiar. This PC, we've done this. The Carrot Documents, Premiere Plus 2. And now I'm going to go, we opened up the software down here, but instead of going to Samples, because we know where that is, I'm going to My Designs. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take these designs and I am going to select these three designs. Okay, so I've, I've selected the three Viking designs and then I'm going to drag them over. See, it says three designs and I'm going to drop them into the My Designs folder. All right, so we know it's that cupcake. We see it over here on the preview, right? So just because I'm from Missouri, which means the show me state, show me, let's make sure that those designs are there. Now I'm going to click on my designs and guess what? There's my cupcakes. Okay, four by four, five by seven, six by 10. Now, if you start acquiring a lot of designs, you may want to create a folder. So I might, I might create a cupcake folder and that's just a computer function, okay? So now, anytime that you acquire designs, the best place to land them, to put them, is within your Premiere Plus 2 software. Those designs you buy from the internet, internet, put them in the My Designs folder, okay? You'll see another folder underneath that, which is One Create Designs, and that is where we store designs that we have affected changes on. Okay, Alexis is, has her index finger in the air indicating there's a question. How did you know to choose those versus the ones above it? You know, um, you can choose either. Since they're all Husqvarna Viking files, all of them will work, okay, with this software. Um, rather than choose one that say Husqvarna Viking slash Foth, those will open, that's fine. I just know that if I go to just straight up Husqvarna Viking and I see the three sizes, it's less confusing. I pick them and then I put them into the My Designs folder, okay? Easy peasy. Um, if it was Janome, I would have picked the three sizes of the Janome and then dumped them into the My Designs so they're easy for us to find. So that's how we get that design. Now we're going to do one other thing. And while I'm in My Designs, um, I am going to create a folder. And that folder, and this is just computer stuff, okay? This is, this is not anything to do with the software. I'm going to call it New York font. Okay, so I'm going back to that site and on this site, okay, you saw where I'm logged in, I went to my account and here it says my downloadable files. I'm just gonna show all the designs that I've acquired. But what I'm doing is, Alexis, I want a new mouse. Because this one is stinky. It doesn't, the wheel doesn't work and it makes me angry. And nobody wants an angry person. Okay. Does that one have a wheel on it? She's getting me a new mouse because this one, the wheel is 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 kludgy and it, um, okay, so hang tight. And this is gonna lead into the next thing we're gonna learn too. All right. All right, so here we go, good, okay. So, remember I got the cupcake, but look at this. So on this site, there is a font. And we know that our software includes many, many fonts, but as embroiderers, we all, more is better. I like this font, I think it looks really neat. It's called New York Embroidery Font, I think it's really cool. So I am going to click on this font. You saw it was a zip file, remember? You just saw it download. Okay, 
and it will be coming up in a minute and then I'm going to, that's going to be part of what we're going to learn. We're going to learn more about fonts, I promise. Okay, it still says scanning for viruses. All right, it should be ready to go. Open file. Okay, so now we see this New York font. I'm going to click on it just like we did before. And we see that there are a variety of sizes. Well, I want the two inch, I want the two inch, I want the one inch. Okay, so within this, you're going to see something that's all the different file formats. And we know that we want the, for our software, we can use the VP3 or the, v, I'm going to use the, um, the VIP because we're going to use that as a building folder. Now, just when I click on this, holy moly. Okay, do you see what we're seeing here? every letter in the alphabet plus numbers, okay? Now, what I'm gonna do is I am going to take and put that folder for that font in the My Designs. So I'm just gonna grab that folder and I'm dumping it into My Designs. Okay, so I click on my designs and there's that font right here. Okay, I was going to put it in this folder, but we're just going to leave it as VIP. I can call it, um, let's see, we'll just, we'll just leave it here. We know that that's where those fonts are. We're going to come back to that. But I wanted you to see that you can go online, acquire a font, and you're going to store it, same place, in the my designs. And I'm going to show you how to integrate it with the software. Okay, so we've done a couple things already. Went to a site, acquired a design, downloaded it, and then we've stored it in the appropriate place in our software so we have access to it, okay? All right, so the next thing we're going to do is we are going to go and go into our software. All right, and what we're going to learn is I promise more about fonts. So we're going into the letter tab. Remember we established vocabulary. These are tabs going across the top. So when I say letter tab... You see where I'm clicking. And I'm going to show you an absolutely gorgeous font that's so much fun, and we're going to learn a little bit more about positioning text. In fact, this font is in the Fun Font Division. Okay, so I'm giving you a second to catch up with me. So we're in the letter tab, the Fun Font Division, so we can use our scroll bar here on the right to get to the Fun Font, and I'm choosing the Christmas font. This font, as you can see, is big. It's 50 to 100 millimeters. We are going to type in here, Mary. I'm hitting the enter button, so we're putting our second line of text. Merry Christmas. Um, and I'm, gonna do, I'm just gonna put Santa, just because I want another letter, no big deal. Okay, so I've got three lines of text. It's 50 millimeters, that's fine. I'm going to center the line one under the other. You see the alignment here? So one line will be centered under the other. I'm going to hit apply. Oh my gosh, is that darling. Look at this font. So the capital letters are each a Christmas motif. Look at the S, it's a swan, for goodness sakes. The moon, it's a Santa moon, and then the little miles makes the M. Now look at this font and I think it is darling, however, there's something really irritating about it. Look how far apart the letters are. Looks, that makes it kind of look kludgy. So I'm going to scoot it over here. We're going to do this again, but I'm going to change the gap. So I'm going to go negative, and I'm going to go negative 10. So by taking the gap and going lower, it's going to put the letters closer together. Now I'm going to hit apply so that you can see the difference. Cute font, but it looks goofy. Over here, it looks much better. Now, the other thing that you may be saying is, golly, because we say golly, the letters or the lines of type are rather far apart. Can we change that? Yes, that's over here. We talked about alignment, so they're justified to the left, to the center, to the right. Here, the spacing, this will change how close the lines of text are together. So I'm gonna take that down to 1.0. 
Again, I'm going to keep all of these up so you can see the differences. I'm going to hit apply. And you can see they're much closer together, okay? So we can choose a font. We can decide how close or how far apart the letters are. We can decide how close or how far apart the lines of text are, okay? Now, I'm going to keep this last one. So I'm going to delete these, bring this text over here to the center. Now, one of the things that we didn't talk about, one of the things that we didn't talk about last week was if we wanted to just make some changes within a text box. You've seen me typing what we want here and then making all of the changes within this toolbar for the letters. The size, how close they are together, if they're justified, center, left, right, and how close the lines are. All of those are changes up here and we hit apply and it appears. And you know, I think I, I mentioned to you last week that I audition text or audition fonts. So I might type the same message in 10 different fonts and scatter them across the page and then pick out which one I like best. That's fine. Another way to do this is to take my text box and I'm going to right click on it. Okay, so we've got right click functionality within our text box and we're going to go up here to properties. All right, so within this properties box, we're gonna notice some familiar entries. Right here, I can do a drop down. I can change the font. So I want Merry Christmas Santa. I don't want to use that font. I have access to all of my fonts. So I'm going to go up here and choose Oh, this would be incredibly goofy. So let's choose it. I chose a an applique font. I've got my message. So if I don't want the message to be the same, still within this drop down functionality, I can change the message. I got rid of the word Santa. The size, the, the 50 falls between the range of the letters here, but I want to change it to make it 35. The gap is negative 10. On this font, the, the spacing is probably okay. So I'm gonna just take that back to zero. In other words, what it natively comes in with the space between the letters. I am going to still center and I am, um, the line spacing, I'm going to take that back to where it was originally, 1.2. We're going to hit OK and see what we get. All right, Merry Christmas. All right, so the big thing is not how it looks right here right now. We can see that this is, I might spread this out a little bit. That looks a little tight for me. So I can go back in, right-click functionality, properties. Uh-oh, I have a question. What's the little yellow box that looks like it has lines in it? Okay, so down here, with a little yellow box, this is your justification for your text. So what this does is this puts, when it's in the center, it puts one line of text centered under the one above it. If I click here, let's do that. Let's click here. We're going to justify, if you're a printer or if you ever worked within um, the printing industry, this, uh, or newspapers, okay, the, the text is now justified to the left. So we changed it to justified to the left. And I said that I, on the gap, I wanted to increase that a little bit because I think they're too close together. So I'm going to go up two. All right, so you can see that we've got a little more space between the letters, which I like. And then now the text is lined up over here on the left. All right, so um, nice. An, an interesting way to do your fonts. Okay, you can choose them and then make changes, okay? Wrong box in upper left next to green box. Okay. In the, in this window, Nancy, right here? In the letter properties window? And we're on a little bit of a delay, so I know she's typing a response to my question. Wrong box, upper left. next to the green box. Not sure, oh, here, this, okay. 
that gives me choices for uh, shapes to put my to put my text. So if I wanted to do a diamond, okay, so it lets me change the shape of the text box. I think that looks a little strange. I'm going to go straight. Okay, so I'm sure that's what she was talking about because that's up left. Okay, good. All right. So, um, all right. Now, I'm going to talk about something else um, on fonts. Anything else on alignment, gap, spacing, sizes, right-click functionality? We should be good on that. All right. Um, next thing we're going to do is for our Janome buddies. I'm going to hit delete and get out of that. And of course, I, since I had that with a box around it, I was able to hit the delete on my keyboard. So if you have a Janome, one of the things that you may have found out by now, maybe not, is that it will do a satin stitch up to seven millimeters wide, but not wider. So let's take a look at a font. I'm going to get my drop down. Hold on. And I know that this is in the modern section. So hang on while I find it. I think it's going to be down here farther. Hang for a second. Let me get to it. Okay, here we go. Modern. And I want, I want impact. All right, so impact here. And I want this to be 30 millimeters. And I, I just, I can't go with Merry Christmas. That's just silly. So we're just going to go with a name. We're going to go with Alexis. And I'm going to change this back to normal to zero. Okay, good. So I've got this impact, which is a, a lovely font. It's a satin font. 30 millimeters, because I want it pretty big. I want to make an impact, and I'm going to hit apply, and we see Alexis pop up. In fact, let's go one step bigger. Let's make it 50. Okay, good. That's going to make it even easier to see. Okay, so when you see Alexis on here, we notice that this is a big satin font, and we know that each of these blocks is 10 millimeters. You can see that these letters far exceed the Janome seven millimeter. About those who have a, what about those who have a baby lock? Um, on the baby lock, I'm not aware of any limitation on a satin stitch on a baby lock. I would say give it a shot. If it doesn't stitch, then I got the solution for you right here. When we're looking at Alexis, okay, we see that this is a wider satin stitch than we can accommodate. So I still like the font. I think it looks nice. But we've got choices. I'm going to take Alexis. I'm going to move her up here. What we're going to do is we are going to change this from being a satin stitch, and I love this. This is fun, to stitch type. And instead of a satin column, which is chosen right now, I'm going to a pattern. Now, don't well, you can scream because I can't hear you. I screamed when I saw this. When I look at the, oh, my gosh. So I can take this font and render it in all of these fabulous textured patterns. I get excited every time I look at them. Okay, I usually like because, well, you know, diamonds are a girl's best friend. So I'm going to choose diamonds and I'm going to go here just because um, it's a pretty big font that I've chosen. And you've got a question for me? Is that font grayed out on my computer? Why is that? It might be, Nancy. Um, the only reason it would be grayed out, some of the fonts that are showing on this computer are fonts that were included with uh, Premier Plus Ultra. So you may not have that particular font, but this applies to any large satin font. Okay, so pick another one. Pick another large satin font. So I've chosen this diamond texture here, and I'm going to hit okie doke. I'm going to hit apply and now look so instead of this wide satin I now have a textured font now a couple things if I have a wide satin font like this and I'm monogramming it on a shirt or on a tote bag or something that needs to be laundered guess what's going to happen a zipper is going to snag on that satin font and it's going to look like caca okay so wide satin fonts like that aren't going to look good anyway 
Can we do them on, on, a, on a Viking? Absolutely. And maybe you want that look. More power to you. But look at this nifty textured font. I'm going to make it bigger so you can see it. All right, so we've got this nice texture in here as opposed to the large, fat, uh, large satin. Now, one thing, I'm clicking on the satin font. Look over here. That satin font is 3,736 stitches. Okie doke. Now, I know if you've already seen this, you're going to gasp. I'm going to click on the textured font. You know it's going to be more stitches, but look how many it is. It's 20,000. Now, point. I, I picked a really big size. Remember up here I picked 50 millimeters? That's huge. It stitches out great. Have I done this? Absolutely. When have I used it? If I need to put a big name on a towel, I'm definitely not going to use a big satin font because it's going to go in the washing machine. It's going to get snagged on the zipper. If I use a textured font, it's going to stitch out beautifully on a towel. Make sure that you use your dissolve away or a topper, right, on a towel, and this will tamp that pattern down into your towel, and it will look beautiful. Okay, been there, done that. All right. When you have time, explore those different textured fills under stitch type. And um, how do I make the satin, the large satin, not cut after each stitch? Okay, Lisa Eifert. So, Lisa Eifert, um, I'm, so Lisa Eifert, do you have a, a genome or do you have a Viking? She has both. She has, she has both. Okay, so if you have, if you're doing it and you want that look, and that's fine. If you want that large satin look, Lisa, and you have um, a Viking, a Viking will do that big large satin stitch, but you need to turn your cutter off because when it's looking at those large stitches, it's thinking that it wants to cut in between those stitches making up that large font. Okay, so um, go into your settings. And we know to go into the settings, depending on what machine that you have, you're going to go into it looks like a gear, or if you have a machine that has a, um, a settings, they'll be under the wrench with the screwdriver, and you'll be to go, able to go in there and turn your cutter off, okay? If you have an Epic, or if you have a Brilliance, or a, an Embroidery Sapphire, when you go from the editing screen to get to your stitch screen, there's the reminder screen. Right in there, you're able to cut to turn your cutter off. If you want to turn it off in the middle of a design, you can do that. Been there, done that too, Lisa. So I, I stitched the whole design. Now it's going to do the letters. I can stop my design, go into my settings, and turn the cutter off on the fly. I can do all of that. If it's a Janome, it's not going to do bigger than your 7 millimeters. It's going to stop, and it's going to give you a really weird error. It's going to stitch and then it's going to stop and it's going to look really bizarre and then a little bell will go off in your mind and you'll go oh yeah brenda said can't do that really big satin on the genome the seven millimeter is your limit there okay and then you're going to want to if you want this to, if you still want that big font now you know how to do it to drop some texture on it okay we're good got it okay let's see where i am now all right, so um, next thing we're going to talk about is I'm going to hit the delete on my keyboard, or I know you saw this, right? I mentioned right-click functionality, so I've got the box around my text box. I can go here with my right-click and go down to delete. Bye, yeah. Okay, so um, at the beginning of our lesson, if you remember, I bought the New York font because I thought it was really, really cool. Well, I know. There are plenty of fonts in here. I know, I know, but I really like that font. So if only we could import it to use within our software. Okay, is there a limit on satin on the Epic? No, there is not, Nancy Sullivan. There is not a limit on the satin on the Epic. If you wanted to do a four inch satin, which would be not be a good idea, if you wanted to do a four inch, it would let you do it. It would it would create that, but that would be bad because you know what that would look like. It would look bad. But no, there's not a limit on the Epic. Um, importing font. So um, if you remember, at the beginning of class, I, I acquired that New York Broadway font, which I really liked, and now I need to bring it into the software so that I can use it. I'm going to Font Manager, and we're going to learn a couple things. If you look here, 
we see all the fonts that are in our software. These are all the different categories, okay, that we saw in our software. Couple things. We see under font tools, there are two choices here. One is a quick font, and what that does is that will take a printer font. So when you type a letter in Word, or you use Excel, and if you're using Windows, and this is a Windows class, you know how you have all those choices for your printer fonts. You can change a printer font into a stitch font. Um, it works okay. I'm not a huge fan. I would, I would prefer to use fonts that have been digitized to stitch as embroidery stitch files. So that's where we're going to go. We're going to import a font from the embroidery. So I'm going to click here, and it says, what do you want to call this? Well, we know we want to call it New York. New York. And now it wants to know where this font is. So I know that the, the font is right here. Okay, it's in the VIP. Okay, yep, we have a question. Okay, I'm going to back up. Hang for a second for me. Okay, so under the letter tab, all right, because we've been working with fonts, right over here next to the drop down for all the fonts, we see the, the button that's labeled Font Manager. Okay, so when I click that, now we're down in within Font Manager. You see me circling it up here at the top. I have two choices down here, and I want to go to Import Font from Embroideries. That's what we want to work on. And I'm going to go ahead and call it New York, and I'm going to put a 2 behind it because I already named it, but I'm going, to, I'm going to say New York 2. And now it wants to be able to import the embroidery file for the letter A. See that up here? Remember, I put the font here in the VIP folder, and I'm going to click on the A, and there's the font, and I'm going to hit okie doke now. So now I see all the characters in my alphabet, and I see my A. Now one of the things that's interesting about this is when I am looking at this A, I notice that um, it is above the line here, okay, the baseline. So this part of the A should be on the line. So I am going to move that line up. Hold on, I'm getting it there. Okay, so it's going to be right under that letter A, and I'm going to hit okie doke. All right, so next I'm going to go to the letter B, open, there's B, and again, now not every font you have to move this baseline, hold on, okay, there's the B. Now, I'm going to go ahead and pick um, the letter, the small A, just for fun, okay? because I want you to see that when I have this letter, see it's sitting right on the line, which is fine. So, gosh, Brenda, I'm going to ask the question for you. Does that mean to import this font, I need to call and order in each one of these daggone letters? Yes. Individually? Yes. Does it take a while? Yes. However, why would I want to do that? Because I love this font so much that I wanted to import it, okay? Um, so you do this on a font you really like, and you do it in an evening when you're too tired to stitch. You can just, and it's pretty monotonous. So I can go, okay, then we go to C. I can find the C, hit the C, open the C. Okay, ooh, that one's right on the line, good. Okay, let's go and go through all of these, all right? So I've got the full alphabet, uppercase, lowercase, and the numbers, all right? If I, want, if I want punctuation, I can do that as well, okay? So I've got the character set up here, okay? So I can add in more lines. Now, why would we ever do this? 
The reason we want to do this, and I'm going to get, um, I've got the C, I've got the A, I want the T, because you know I'm going to do cat, right? Hang for a second. Bum, 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 bum. Bum. There's a small T. Open. Okay. All right. So um, we're going to pretend that I have loaded all of these characters. Nope, I don't want to do that. I'm going to go with here, and I'm going to hit close. Um, and then I'm going to hit close here. So now when I want to go find that font, because I loaded it into my software, when I look here, it is going to be in my fonts. Hang for a second. Okay, so here it is. So my font. So what this means, when you're looking at this software, these are my fonts. These are the ones that we have either purchased or in teaching, okay, because te I've taught this before, that we have taken and made into our fonts, and that's this is the category that they go in. So we see it says New York. There it is. So I'm going to type in the word cat, C-A-T, and it's going to come in at 37 millimeters. I can change the size. We're just going to hit apply. Great. And it looks super. And that's kind of a neat font. Now, if I go and I type in dog, we didn't upload those letters yet. So I don't know what happened. Hopefully this doesn't explode. That would be really embarrassing. Eh, eh, doesn't do anything. All right. Because I didn't, I didn't upload. I didn't take the time to upload every single letter in this font. All right. So that's how you do it. Now, if I don't upload this font into the software. I've, so I bought the font. I downloaded the font. I've got a folder containing all the letters for the font. It's in my software under my designs, but I didn't upload it using font manager. Okay. I can't type here. So is there an alternative? Yes. Is it a pain in the rear? Yes. So, for example, I can go file. Oh, you're just going to love this. You're not. Insert. Don't even try to file. Don't, don't try to do this. Just let me do it for you. File, insert, documents. This should look familiar. This is how we open a design, right? My designs. Oh, there's VIP. So I would have to go in here. There's the D for dog. Open. Seriously? This is why we go through Font Manager and we upload a font because I would have to go and find each individual letter and I would have to space them myself and make sure they're straight. That's a pain. So if there's a font you really like, it's worth importing it, okay? All right, um, let's see, how am I doing? Uh, would be dumb, it would be dumb, just it would be dumb. Uh, is there, okay, we're good, all right. Okay, so. Importing fonts. Um, how, am I, how am I doing on time? Okay, let me let me check. Okay, I, I should I Alex? What's your opinion? Show them how to do a change of printer font or not? Yeah. Okay. Good. Alexa says yes. Okay, so we're going to go back into Font Manager again, and I told you about Quick Fonts. So Quick Fonts, when I choose that, what that does is that allows me to go in and look at these fonts. Now, these should look familiar. These are printer fonts. These are the ones you use in Word. So if I look at this and I say, yes, um, let's see, also delete the ones you don't like. Also can, is there a limit to how many you can import? No, no, not really. I mean, no, there, there really isn't. Okay, so I'm looking at this, and I'm going to choose, I want something that we can see. Um, that looks weird. Let's do this one. Why not? Okay, time out. Yes. Let's say I have the Premiere Plus 2 Extra, and it doesn't have Font Manager. Yeah, it does. Then City Houseman asked, did you choose the 37 millimeter size on your imported font? If yes, will it let you make it larger or do you have to go through the import font again nope. with a different size? Nope. Okay, it will it will scale it. So 37, if you didn't like the 37, 
within that box for the size, choose a different size within reason. You'll be able to tell on the screen. So if you, if you imported that font and it came in at 37 millimeters and you wanted to make it 45, rock on. If you wanted to make it 100, you might see it break apart. If it does, don't use that size. Okay, if you want to make it smaller, again, you'll be okay. All right, because it's going to be scalable. All right, um, font man you should have Font Manager in Premiere Plus Extra. Okay, that should be there. Uh, what machine is this for? I don't know. I don't know what. Oh, this is for any, for any embroidery machine. This is because this is just a software. This doesn't have anything to do with your brand of embroidery machine. You can use this these fonts, importing fonts, or um, the quick fonts on any embroidery machine. This is just a, this is the software. Okay. So what we did is we went into quick font. I chose a printer font, which we decided was font. And that's kind of cute. I kind of like that. Notice here it says style. So we went regular, we have bold, we have italics. I'm just going to go with the regular because I kind of like the look of it. File type for use in our embroidery system. Yeah, I want that. Yeah, that's for me. Yes, I want this in my software. Character set extended. Yeah, because I want numbers and I want upper and lower case. Okay, so I'm going to go down here and hit next. All right, so it's saying pattern fill. Hmm, all right, so here I can decide if I want this to be a satin or if I want it to be a pattern. Okay, so I can choose satin and we know, all right, so it just, it just changed. So the output range right now is 12 millimeters, maximum of 30, so it's giving me some sizes there. Okay, so I can, if I want to have it smaller, all right, I can go down to seven. All right, and I've got the sizes that it's going to be brought in. If I want to make it a textured font, I can bring it in as a textured font. I probably would not do that. I probably would bring it in as a satin. I can always change it. You know how to do that. We just learned that. So I am going to go here. Um, that's it. I'm going to hit next. It's generating the font. So now I'm going to sit back for just a moment. It's going to create this new font, which was named, I think it was like Fort, F-O-R-T-E. Yes, we're almost done with fonts. I can hear you, Kelly Brand. I heard that. This is the last thing. See, it says Fort. Notice that's the name of the font we chose. Also, it's showing me the size range, 7 to 30 millimeters. That's what we chose. And where is it going to put it? Remember, my fonts right here. It's going to be in that folder. So I'm going to say finish. It's saving the font. Are we going to make sure it's there and type something other than cat? Absolutely. We'll type Alexis. And is there um, another? What? How do you make the folder for my fonts? It's already there. It, the my fonts folder is created all by the software itself. It's already there. You don't have to create it. It was already there. Okay. So we saved our font, and now I'm going to close this. And we are going, we don't want to type dog, we want to type Alexis. A-L-E-X-I-S. And what font do we want her in? We want to go to the My Fonts, okay, which is right here. And the font that we just made was the Fort, okay? So there's the font. And I'm going to make it a little bit bigger, make it 12, and I'm going to hit Apply. So now Alexis is rendered in 12, and that is too small to see. Hmm, I wonder if we can go right-click, right? We learned this just a minute ago. Properties. And instead of 12, we're going go to crank that up to 30. All right, so now we've got Alexis in the font that we turned into a stitch front from a printer font, okay? And that was through Font Manager. I'm just going to review font manager to change a printer font it's quick font when we buy a font we import it from embroideries okay good all right i think we've we've beat the font up i like fonts and the reason i, I spent a lot of extra time on that is in design and we talked about this last week everything has text on it i mean i've got a light shade at home a lampshade with text on it. i've got pillows with text on it you see it on everything. Everything has cute little sayings on it. So now you have more latitude with your designs. Okay, next thing we're going to talk about. Bye, ya. Um, uh, I think it was 
Jana Connolly. Is that the right name? Is it Jana Connolly? Okay, somebody asked me about grouping designs. Okay, so I'm going to quickly, don't follow me on this, just watch. So just chill for me a second. I'm going to insert three designs very, very quickly from my samples. So just chill for me a second. I'm getting there real quick. And remember, when you, when you put a second design on a page, we don't file open. Remember, we learned this last week. We file insert to add another design on a page. And I need a third little flower. Okay, so I've got three designs. Now, um, if you remember last week, they asked, can you group these together so that you can move them as a unit? And I can. So what I'm doing is I'm clicking on a design. I am taking my left index finger and holding down the control button. I'm clicking on another design and the third design, and now they are all grouped. So now when I move them, they move together. Okay? So I called up my multiple designs. I clicked on one. I, I had the control button to held down. I clicked on one design, and then all the designs that I wanted to put in the group to move together. You'll notice that the group button is now lit up. If I want to ungroup it, okay, I can click the individual designs. All right, that's how we group. And but what if you want the original font that was shown in the red? Hmm? I don't know what that means. Okay, um, Lenford Nelson. Not not really sure what you're at. I would look look to see the Alexis in that font. I would I would. I'm not sure what you're asking. Ask me again because I'm not I'm not real sure what you're asking there. Okay, so grouping and ungrouping. We're good on that. I'm going to deep six these, and I want to explore another tab. Okay, so we've gone over the home tab, um, and there's some things we haven't gone through, and I know. Um, we've gone through the letter tab extensively. We're going to talk about the super designs. Why? Because they're really fun. Now, when I look at these super designs, these are more samples built into your machine. Holy moly, more? Yes, this software is always about more. So when I want to search for something, I can type in something up here. So if I wanted to look for frogs, F-R-O-G, okay, and I can hit frogs and hit enter. And there are the frogs within the super designs. Okay, I'm not really crazy about this, so we're gonna we're gonna get rid of this. Okay, I can look here for categories. There are animals, applique, borders, buttonholes, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. I'm pulling this down. Each one of these categories has designs in it, flowers and leaves. Oh, is that all there is? No. On any time you see a drop-down menu in this software, it means more. So when I drop that down, I see more flowers and leaves. In fact, if I go in the categories and I go to all, okay, it's loading up, and I drop down, these are all the designs. I mean, there's just a crazy amount of super designs. Why do we like super designs? I'm going to show you. Um, I'm going to pick a fish. Why? I like fish. All right, I'm going to hit apply. Now, if you remember, when we were talking about the fonts and when we were working with that, we said if there are green handles, that means that the design is scalable. So super designs are scalable. I can make them bigger or smaller, and it will maintain the integrity of the design. So this has 6,000 6, stitches. I'm holding my control button down to maintain the um, proportions. And when I make it a little bit bigger... Okay, now it's 10,000 10, stitches. Now, someone's going to ask me, well, how big can I make it? You're going to see when I stretch this fish too much, the fish is going to blow apart. Okay, actually it didn't. Holy cow. A little bit of space down here, but that really maintained the integrity of the design. So that shows you on these super designs, they're digitized such that you can really go from 
small to large. Now it's 41,000, which is incredibly large, okay? Because we started with like, what, 3,000 stitches, okay? So super designs, and there are plenty of fun things in there. In fact, one of the things that I was talking to Kathleen about, and this is fun. I think this is really fun. We're talking about super designs still. Buttonholes, what? All right, look at this. These are embroidered buttonholes. So you're making a purse, a tote bag, even a dress. I can pick a buttonhole and drop it right here on the screen. Now, hang for me a sec. I'm gonna, actually, I'm gonna make this, the view of this a little bigger. Then I'm gonna make the buttonhole bigger, but I'm gonna go up and I'm gonna make this big so we can see it. Eh, that's a little too big. Okay, so I can see the buttonhole. Now, the buttonhole, I'm going to make it larger. Okay, we know how to do this. This is scaling, so if I'm using a really attractive craft button or I want a bigger buttonhole, again, I'm holding down the, the control button on my keyboard, grabbing the corner and making it bigger. Now, I just made that bigger, but how big is the button I need for it? And Kathleen gave me this idea. I told her I was going to steal it, of course, without footnoting it, but I did, she just threw her hands up. I did footnote it, Kathleen, I gave you credit. Okay, so this is the buttonhole that I've chosen. And on 100%, that's how big it is. But let's measure the inside of the buttonhole so we know what size the button is. So I'm going back to my home screen. Actually, I'm gonna go to the view. Excuse me, let me cough. <coughs> So I went to the View tab, and over here, I've got my electronic tape measure. What? Click, see the tape measure? I'm clicking on the inside of the buttonhole, stretching it down, and I can see that the buttonhole itself, the opening, is 1.02 inches. So that tells me what size of button this buttonhole will accommodate which I think is pretty exciting. To make this tape measure go away, I just right click and it disappears. Back to super design. So, buttonholes, fun. Look at this little butterfly buttonhole. Is that darling? Wouldn't that be cute? Okay, so, super designs. I am um, now, at this point, I wanna look at the applique choices. I'm gonna make these go away. And again, drop down menu, so there's more, oh my goodness. Plenty and plenty and plenty of appliques. Most of these are kind of really directed at kids, I guess. Well, here's some food down here. All right, let's pick something simple. Let's pick, um, let's pick the pumpkin. Fancy buttonholes, love it. Thanks, Janet. Okay, what, what makes a super design? The super design is just a tab in the software that is giving me designs that are keyword scalable. So I can make them bigger or smaller and it will change the number of stitches in the design. That's what makes it a super design. Okay, and we know that we seek those under the super design tab. So now I just went here and um, I wanted the pumpkin and, but I'm gonna do something, well first let's, let's apply so we've got our pumpkin. Okay, there's our pumpkin, wonderful. Now, we've got another choice. This is an applique, we know what that means. It's going to, we've all done applique before. It's going to do a placement stitch, put your fabric down. It's going to do a tack down stitch, trim it out. Then it does your final stitching, which is your satin stitching. However, again, the software is very powerful. It gives me choices. Notice here under select style, I can go to a different type of border. I can go to a motif border. Oh, very cool. All right, so it's going to give me a couple of different choices. I'm going to hit apply. It's coming in. So, I like that. So instead of the satin, this gives me a, a more folksy look. Okay, for my applique, I think that's kind of fun. It's like a it's kind of like a blanket stitch, but it's on both sides. I think that's kind of fun. So I challenge you to explore the super designs. Take a look, see what all is there, okay? Um, I think that's it for super designs. Any questions, Alex? Okay. Uh, what makes it, okay, but can I do that by resize and hold the control? 
You know, you can, but within the super designs, it's just that much easier to to change the size of the design within within super design rather than using resize. The control button. The control button is very important. When you are changing the size of your design and pulling on a corner, if I don't hold the control button down, see what happens? It's not sized proportionally. So I'm going to go back up here. Remember we did our undo button. Hang it. Okay. So when I hold the control button down on the keyboard, that allows me to change the size of my design, but it will change it proportionally which is important to me most of the time. There are times when I might want to stretch something out of shape, but not right now. I don't want to have a, I don't want to have a silly looking pumpkin. I would add too that the super designs are made to be scalable. Correct. The super, typical designs correct. The, a good point. The super designs are designed by the software to be scaled. They are designed to be scalable and enlarged and reduced a lot and still maintain the integrity of your design. That's why they're there. And there were choices, plenty of choices, fun stuff. Okay, um, we are at 5.30. I had one more thing I wanted to go through, but I, um, we can do a few questions if we want. Alexis, should I do that? Or I was gonna go into this module, go, go forward or cut it off and save this for next week. Okay. okay, Alex says we're going to save, and I'm not going to tell you what it is. Why? Oh, because, because, because. We'll have fun next week. Um, actually, remember, it's not next week because I'm going to be out of town having fun. I will report back about my trip to Amish country. So our, our yes, and um, Kathleen is giving me the high sign. She's, um, she's writing in the air, which means sign up for her flag wristlet class. Um, our next class is not next Wednesday but the following, which is the 26th of May, and that will be our third session on the software. And then we'll see how far we get. If everyone is really digging this, is there more that Brenda can teach? You betcha. Brenda loves to hear herself talk. Don't I, Alexis? Absolutely. She's saying absolutely, nodding her head vigorously. Okay, but there's, I, I just love this because it lets me be creative. And I always tell my students, if you've taken a class from me, you know you've heard this before, I know people are yawning. 90% of embroidery is planning. 10% is stitching out. Choosing the design, sizing it, colorizing it, merging it with another design, with text, all of that. And that's what this software brings to the table. This lets you decide what you're going to embroider. And I love it. Are we ever going to get to some digitizing, Brenda? Yes. We're gonna do some simple digitizing. I think, I think I'm think i going to dally with, I'm looking at Alexis on our next class. I'm gonna do just some simple digitizing. Okay, we're gonna go through that and then there's some other modules I wanna to touch on for you. Do we have any other questions? Um, Sharon Martin said, when you selected the select style, what was the other choice you had? Oh yeah, it was on the select style, there was the satin border is demonstrated here and I know what you're doing, I know what you're asking. Let's, let's go hit and hit apply so you can see the difference. Hang for me a second. Okay, good, you know, I'm, I'm actually glad you asked that, Sharon. Thanks for, for having my back. Look at the difference. The one has the traditional blanket stitch, okay, where the spikes or the, I call it the bite, is on one side, where the other one is, is prickly, where you've got the bite on both sides. So you've got three choices on the style, which I like. I like, I like having the ability to make decisions on what I want to stitch out. Thanks for asking that. I appreciate that. Anything else before we um, say goodbye? Oh, yes. Alexis is shaking up the names. And remember, the prize is our hot ruler, our hot new notion. And we're ready to draw. She's shaking them up. My hand is going in the bin. And the winner is, and you must be present to win. We know that too. Lisa Dolezal, D-O-L-E-Z-A-L. -E Lisa, did I say that right? Mm -hmm. Dolezal. And is Lisa still? Lisa, say hi. Make sure you're here to get your prize. Otherwise, we're going to pull on another name. Give it a second. We're giving it a second because I know we're on delay. Alexis says it's on a 15-second delay because she's afraid I'm going to curse. That's not true. That's not true. It's just the way the software works. Oh, she's still here. Woohoo! 
Excellent, Lisa. So you won the hot roller. Stop in to pick that up. And I think we are finished for today. And thank you, ladies. Till next time, it's Brenda with Luke's.